Coming up next on College Football Live. What if this never happened? Boise State's upset of Oklahoma in the 2007 Fiesta Bowl. We'll take a look next on College Football Live. And that's how we roll into the latest edition of College Football Live. Mike Hill hanging out with Ed Cunningham. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Ed, tell the people why you're so upset today. Well, uh, Boise State. Fired up. <laughs> Fired up. Yeah. Boise State, we're going to take a look at their schedule. We'll break it down and look at all of their tough games. They've got the schedule to win, but they've got to win them all, of course, to be in the national championship. The word if. Just two little letters, but figuratively one of the biggest words in any and everything you do. Just ask LeBron how his life would be different if he would have said Cleveland last night, or mine if I would have said I do the first time. So in our continuing look at what if, today Reese Davis poses the question, what if Boise State hadn't shot the college football world back in the 2007 Fiesta? Nebraska might be the last play of his career. Back to pass, sets up, fires, caught. Boise State pulled out its bag of tricks and took down the Goliath that was Oklahoma in the 2007 Fiesta Bowl, starting with a fourth down hook and lateral that helped propel them to the upset. But what if the Broncos' trick play hadn't been successful and the Sooners had held on for the victory? And Johnson does not have the opportunity to score the winning two-point conversion and doesn't propose to his girlfriend after playing the game. However, they do later get married and remain happy. Boise State confirms what skeptics believe to be true, that the smaller schools can't compete with the Big Six power conferences in bowl games. Utah's victory over Pitt in the 2005 Fiesta Bowl is viewed as more of an aberration than the norm, resulting in schools from the non-automatic qualifying conferences getting shut out after Boise's Fiesta Bowl loss. Hawaii, instead of getting soundly beaten by Georgia in the 2008 Sugar Bowl, goes to the Champ Sports Bowl, while it's Boston College who plays the dogs in the Sugar Bowl. The following year, an undefeated Utah team winds up in the Poinsettia Bowl instead of dominating Alabama in the Sugar Bowl. The game is also a tied turning performance for the Oklahoma Sooners. Head coach Bob Stoops regained the moniker of Big Game Bob, interrupting a streak of BCS bowl game losses. With newfound bowl game confidence, the Sooners ride the momentum to a BCS bowl game win in 2008 and a national championship win against Florida in the 2009 title game. It is the question that can't be answered with any certainty, but one that opens so many possibilities. What if? Well, Boise State hasn't looked back since that win. The Broncos have won 90% of their games in the last two WAC championships. Last season, Boise State captured its second BCS game victory, returning to the Fiesta Bowl and knocking off fellow non-AQ school, TCU. This upcoming season will be the Broncos' last in the WAC as they will join the Mountain West in 2011. And we are now joined by the quarterback of that Fiesta Bowl winning team, Jared Zabransky, who is currently the quarterback of the Edmonton Eskimos up there in the CFL. And Jared, take us back now. It's fourth down. You get that play call. What's going through your mind? Well, my, my thought process was pretty simple at that point in time. You know, complete the pass and give us a chance to, to uh, you know, have a play there. You know, first and foremost, call the play in the huddle. Uh, you know, we were very detail-oriented at Boise State, so it was just down to the basics, and that was the best way to execute for us. So, uh, you know, throw, throw a good ball and, uh, you know, take off running, basically. Several trick plays worked for you guys in that game. How often did you practice the trick plays? The trick plays or trick plays, period? The trick plays, period. Did you just play around? How often did you, when did you nah, practice these? We, we, we ran uh, that hook and ladder at the end of uh, every Friday practice, so day before practice. And, uh, yeah, so that was just part of our – we did that in the Hail Mary. And then, uh, you know, it, it never worked, though, was the thing. Like, <laughs> our defense would always we, – we wouldn't we wouldn't get the pitch or our defense would, would fall into it. So, you know, I, I think 
you know, God touched us with his hand for sure on that play. So were you, were you surprised when it worked against a team like Oklahoma? Well, you know, looking back on it, yeah, but if you really dissect the situation, they were uh, a very aggressive team, and I think that corner just kind of fell asleep on that play and kind of took it, took it for granted. Hey, how do you think that game changed the way we look at non-automatic qualifying schools in the BCS and the national scheme of things? Well, I think it changed the scope dramatically. And, uh, you know, as soon as that game was over, I, I said it on, on live television or, or, uh, in the press conference afterwards that that was probably the biggest game in, in college football history. And, and my thought process was because of that, because it, it was going to force, you know, all the – all the BCS buster talk and, and tournament talk and all that different stuff. And I still feel that way. All right. Seems like your, your school is about to make a move to another conference. What are your thoughts on uh, Boise State moving to the uh, Mountain West? I think, that's a, I think that's a good move for us. You know, I, you know it's, it's hard to move from a, a, a non-BCS to another non-BCS. You know, and it's hard to say that that's, that's a, a big upgrade. But the, the conference is a stronger conference uh, by and large. But, you know, I, I would have liked to see us move into the Pac-10 or, or to a BCS school or, or uh, you know, if they, if they were going to move into the Mountain West, I'd like to see them, you know, remove a couple of the, the poor teams and, mm. and uh, you know, make that a BCS conference. Very interesting right there. All right, Jared Zabransky, man, thanks for joining us today, and uh, good luck up there in Canada with the Edmonton Eskimos. Yeah, I appreciate you. Thanks for having me. You were also in Glendale that night. Uh, what do you remember about that game? You know, it was amazing sitting in that stadium uh, about midway through the third quarter. I was doing the radio call with Ron Franklin, so I had a great seat listening to a great play-by-play -play guy, and in radio, the play-by-play -play guy has to do a lot of the work. I actually got to just sit and kind of suck it in and, and watch what was going on in that field. And there was a moment in the third quarter we went to break and Ron and I both looked at each other and said something, something feels special here. I think I would have been more shocked if Boise State would not have pulled off mm. the hook and lateral and not have pulled off the, uh, the reverse for the two-point conversion had they been stopped. I, I, I would have been shocked had that happened. It just had that feel like something special was going to happen. One of the lucky times in my career where during the game, I actually realized how important and great the game was. And you heard Jared talk about the importance of the game and what it meant for uh, non-automatic uh, uh, qualifiers. How much did it help non-automatic qualifiers in the scheme of things that they, they beat a team like Oklahoma in that game? I, I think both Jared and the piece, uh, the what-if piece, uh, what Reese was saying is exactly right. I think if it had been another team not in Oklahoma, uh, I think that people still would have thought, and, and, and I think the what-if piece made a good point about Pitt, Utah beating Pitt. Pitt was not very good that year. They backed in. A couple things had to end, uh, go their way at the end of the season in the Big East for them to go in. And I don't think they, the non-AQ schools got a, enough credit out of that win or got any credit really out of that win. So I think it was very key. And I think it's put Boise State in position with this schedule that they have to play for the national championship. Ooh. And you take a look at that national chance, at, at, at the run going into this season, it, it could be really tough. Yeah, that happens. And look at this schedule right here. They got Virginia Tech on September 6th at Wyoming, Oregon State, the Pac-10, Fresno State, Nevada. That is a really tough schedule for Boise State. And Virginia Tech, three defensive starters back, although kind of a home game for Virginia Tech. Wyoming was in a bowl game last year. Oregon State, the Rogers brothers, Stephen Paya, maybe the best defensive tackle in the game. Idaho, Fresno State, Nevada, all bowl teams at the end of the season. Well, they do become the uh, national championship. They'll be the first non-AQ conference team to win a national championship since BYU in 84. We asked you on ESPN.com, what do you think would have happened if Boise State's hook and lateral fail? And the majority of you say the BCS ignores non-AQ teams for good. And remember, right after we're done here, you can see the 2007 Fiesta Bowl thriller at 4 Eastern over on ESPN Classic. Hey, on